Welcome to another Todd's Two Minute Tech Tip Tuesday. Brought to you by the National RV Training Academy. The largest hands-on RV training academy in America. Hey, before we get to the video, which I know this is the reason why you're here, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. That way you don't miss anything. Hit the subscribe button now. Thank you. Now, back to our Tech Tip Tuesday. Hey, this week, I can go ahead and answer another question. Now, this question was actually put out uh, by uh, Mr. Dave Gotham. He says, hi, Todd. I have a question that I remember hearing about, but have no answer to it. When camping and the pedestal is live and there's no way to turn the power off, what is the correct way to do it with a surge protector? I have looked uh, for a switch that can go in between the pedestal and the RV and haven't been able to find any. Uh, thank you for your tips. Uh, we watch every chance we can. That's why I'm answering your question, because of that sentence right there. Thank you for your tips. Actually, it's thank you for your tips. But hey, here's the thing. It's a great question. Let me throw this away, right? And here's the concern. Hey, look, I have a live box. <laughs> and unfortunately, there are some RV parks that don't let you flip that breaker. Okay? And so you're connecting hot. Okay? The concern is... And I have to go through several things here. When you connect hot, that energy there is ready to go. And if you don't make good solid connection in trying to, you know, inserting your, whether it's a surge protector or straight into your, um, uh, let's see, your power cord, you can burn stuff up. So let me go over that for you and then go over what you need to do. So we need to understand uh, that electricity, electrons nearly move at the speed of light. They move fast faster than what you can insert, you know, your plug into. Now I want you to think about this. You have a big fat power cord. The reason why you have a big fat power cord is contact space. These electrons move across that cord. And let's say, of course, you have your prongs. And fully inserted, there's enough metal there for all the electrons that need to go across that metal can do it. The problem is, is as you're um, uh, plugging in, right, you make contact. If there's something on calling for power, right, whether it's an air conditioner or a microwave or anything else, right, typically the microwave will not instantly come on as soon as you plug it in because just the circuit board lights up. But an air conditioner, because of the thermostat, can. So the concern is, is well, if I'm connecting to a live uh, box, which means I've got electricity sitting right here, and as I begin to connect, I make contact, and I could burn, burn up my connection as I'm just simply trying to insert it. All right, the question is, is how do we do that? If we can't turn off the breaker, which would basically reduce the power here to nothing, I can safely connect, then flip the breaker, okay? And I teach this in class all the time, okay? The correct way to connect to any outlet is to make sure that everything is off inside the RV, right? All the heavy loads. There are certain things you can't turn off, certain things that really just it's up to you whether you want to turn it off. Heavy loads. Your air conditioners need to be off. So the question is, is how do you turn off your air conditioner, right? If there's a thermostat on the wall, the thermostat runs on 12 volts. So even though you're not plugged into shore power, if the thermostat is set to cool and it's set to a temperature that is cooler than in the room, as soon as you supply 120 volts, wham, that air conditioner is going to try and kick in. There's where our problem is. So first and foremost, turn off everything inside the RV that you can, okay? Now granted, again, the microwave is off. You don't really need to, there's nothing to turn off there. It's, is the appliance in the on position if there's a switch, or does it run off of 12 volts to turn it on and off, like the, the refrigerator, like the water heater? The water heater, again, 12 volts to the circuit board, running off the battery, and if that water is cool enough, and you have it set to electric and that button is on, as soon as you connect, there's 1500 watts going through. That's what burns up, okay? Now you stated that you have an EMS uh, you know, of some sort, maybe a watchdog or something like that. All of those, they have a delay. So you can safely, even if the pedestal is hot, you could take, if it's a true um, uh, monitoring system, like a watchdog, um, surge guard, um, or even the EMS, when you plug those in, there's a preset delay. So it gives you more than enough time to click in there because what that monitoring system is doing is kind of checking the voltage. It's checking the hertz. Um, 
Uh, it's checking to make sure that you have a good neutral and a good ground. Okay, and if all of those are good, then the contact inside your, you know, surge protector of some sort will connect. However, now the contact can be burned up if you have something inside the RV calling for major power. So it doesn't matter whether you have some type of monitoring device, which by the way, all RVs should have something out there protecting them from the electricity you're borrowing. Okay, make sure everything's off inside the RV. If you make sure everything is off inside the RV, you can plug into a hot outlet, right? And not burn anything up. Um, so there you go. So again, the takeaway from this, electricity moves nearly at the speed of light. You don't want to plug into um, any type of receptacle if the state of whatever you have is ready to go as soon as there's electricity applied. Turn it off. So go to your thermostat, turn it off. Okay, go to your 12 volt switch for your water heater if it runs on electric, turn it off. I get the question about the refrigerator, right? Does the refrigerator, here's the problem. Um, it's up to you. If you have a convenient on off switch, you can turn it off. The problem is, you're creating a new habit and you may forget to turn it back on. Okay. I look at it like this. That refrigerator is going to draw anywhere from 150 Watts to 500 Watts. Yes. It's going to kick in as soon as you plug into it. It's up to you whether you want to turn that off or not. If you do start turning it off, you better make notes to turn it back on. Otherwise you're going to oh, get no. upset because all your food is bad. So again, turn things off, high demand stuff. Don't worry about your lights, your 12 volts or anything else that has nothing to do with the pedestal. Heavy items, you'll be safe. And of course your appliances will last a lot longer. There's your tech tip. All right, before you get to the bloopers, which is why you're here in the first place, the RV industry needs thousands of RV technicians and inspectors. And now is the perfect time to do that. If you want to make more money or have more control over your time, Go ahead and click the link below. Or if you just want to learn how to fix your own RV, got something for you there. Head over to rvtechcourse.com and get started today. Now for the reason that you're at the end of the video, roll the bloopers. Your appliances will last a lot longer. A lot longer. Hey, up. bam. Looky there. See, that was a good five minutes. Yeah. 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 There we go. So there's your two five minute tech tip.